So are different kinds of monsters like different races, or are they like completely different species? You've got different numbering of eyes, some with wings, I just want to know what the rules are here. You're already beginning this video with irrelevant questions? That's gotta be a new record. At least it's better than pointing out the Disney and Pixar logos. Frightened Elementary is one of presumably many shameless scare puns that we will see throughout the film. I mean, yeah, it's a movie where monsters live in a world that's very similar to the human world, Similar to cars, you really shouldn't be surprised to see puns. And no fire breathing! But all of the other strange powers that these monster children probably have, i.e. laser vision, spitting acid mucus, and this guy, who seems like his mere existence is a hazard, are totally okay. That last one is valid, but it's very possible that the kids here don't have the rest, and that's why the teacher isn't bringing them up. Who are we missing? Quirky protagonist got left behind creating a significant reveal cliche. Which is a trope that usually works, so the word cliche doesn't work here. We're cousins! Again, not sure of the genetics going on here. Is fur a dominant or recessive trait? Who cares? We're entering a very dangerous area! Which is apparently okay to bring a school group of children to. What Jeremy is neglecting to show is that there is a safety line right at the entrance to the scare floor, and the kids are meant to stay behind it. This is where we collect the scream energy to power our whole world. Between this movie and the other monsters movie, there's never been a clear explanation as to how it's collected. Are they just collecting sound? Why does human scream produce this energy and not monster scream? This all seems very complicated when they could just capture a bunch of human children and make them scream for a while into a large machine. Oh, wait, that's the plot of the other movie. Carry on. Asking more irrelevant questions. And are you seriously suggesting the scream extractor from the first movie was a good idea? Did you not see what happened to Fungus? The Right Stuff Style Heroes Walk cliche, which also appeared in Monsters, Inc. If you rip off your own ripoff, does that make it new? No, it's an homage, and this is more of a callback to Monsters, Inc., even playing the same music. It's Mike going over the line. Mike knows not to go over the line because they said it like four times in the last three minutes, so if he's clearly going to break the rules, why would he not try to sort of hide? Wait, so you do know about the safety line then? That makes that previous sin extra sinful. I thought I heard something. That dad didn't look around for two more seconds and say, I don't remember buying our son a blue alligator skin jacket. Right, because the parents would definitely look at the coat hanger after being scared that someone was in the same room with their son. Totally. So after the monster collects the scream, he just casually walks out of the room through the closet? And no kid in the history of scream collecting has found this to be weird? I mean, even if they did, what would they do about it? If they looked in the closet, the portal to the monster world would be closed by then. And if they explained this to their parents, they wouldn't believe them. I'm welling up with tears. The bus driver is able to pronounce her S sounds really well, given her jaw and teeth situation. And doors teleport monsters to a different world. This movie is already unrealistic. That's my point. Who was that monster throwing that giant frisbee to? Was it the one other 50-foot monster in the school? Uh, yeah? That's pretty obvious, right? Is that a sin? If so, why? Also, how many items are scaled up for the giant monsters? She certainly can't attend any classes in buildings or sit in chairs. Well, they obviously have giant buildings for these bigger monsters. A little later in the same scene, Mike looks in the river and sees underwater monsters attending a school of their own. So it's safe to assume the same applies to giants. Also, I know this is a universe filled with monsters, but this is the only giant we've seen between both of the films Pixar's made about the monster world. No, that is a complete lie. This same movie shows a giant football player and an Ursula-looking librarian. Heck, in the first movie, there was another giant that Sully and Mike ran into. It looks like they're just making normal doors. How do they know what the doors are supposed to look like to match up with the closet door in the human world? Is it the door that's special, or the apparatus that holds the door? There's a lot missing here. I mean, sure. But again, this information isn't relevant to the story of this movie. 
This movie is about Mike's want of becoming a scarer as well as the scare games. You really shouldn't expect the movie to pause just to explain how they create these doors. Yeah, but lose the glasses. They give it away. And that's how Randy got his devious squint, by foregoing vision correction. Narration. Dean Hartscramble is one of the few monsters that gets to wear clothes. He says, over a shot of Professor Knight standing right there. Sullivan. Like Bill Sullivan, the scarer? Yeah, he's my dad. Sullivan is a very common name. This was a roll of the dice. How do you know that? What other monster has the name Sullivan? We have only seen one in both movies, and judging by the fact that Professor Knight immediately thought of Bill Sullivan, very much implies this name isn't common in this world. I'm sorry, Sh should I keep going? No, no, Mr. Sullivan's coming in. All Sully did was roar. He didn't answer the professor's question. My theory is that the professor has a monster equivalent of a hard-on for Sully. This guy was talking about what the properties of an effective roar are, and Sully demonstrated exactly that. Was this really that hard to understand? Oh, wait, I forgot. You don't understand what show don't tell means, right? Also, Jeremy says boner. This monster, explicitly called a pig, isn't much bigger than Mike, and appears to not be anthropomorphic. So they could theoretically, like, eat it? What are the rules? Another irrelevant question. You really think your audience cares about these things? Sully and Mike's first encounter and subsequent rivalry occur because somehow a pig Sully stole from Fear Tech managed to climb into Mike's dorm room, which is at an impossible height for pigs or Sully. You really don't think Sully could have climbed this? Is this pig also half spider? Or can pigs just run up walls in this universe? I mean, yeah, that's what the movie is saying. This movie even began with a shot of a bird with two heads and a frog-like tongue. But you didn't say anything about that. The animals in this world are clearly different from what we have in the real world. Like, if they had regular animals exactly like on Earth, you'd question that. Mike makes a quick decision to make an impossible shot that would in no way work in a real-world situation. You might be saying to yourself, well, this is a college filled with monsters. This isn't the real world. But the physical properties of things are the same there as they are here. So the sin still stands, thus ending an argument I just had with myself. Wow, you just answered your own question. This isn't the real world. Is this their version of beer pong? Get the gooeyest guy wasted so that we can play tic-tac-toe on his chest with our ping pong balls? That seems a lot more complicated and difficult than the way we do it. No, you're making it seem more complicated than it really is. It's safe to assume that they saw this guy sleep here and took the opportunity to mess around with him by playing ping pong. These are college students we're talking about here. Where did this guy come from? I feel like I would have noticed him at the line of scrimmage. Also, having a giant blob on your football team that is impossible to take down is colossally unfair. And seeing this giant should have made you realize that that previous giant is not the only one we saw, right? Why don't you go back and rewrite that sin, or just delete it? How is it this video has over 15 million views? Dominant Silverback Gorilla. How do they know what Silverback Gorillas are? Do they have Silverback Gorillas in the monster world? I have two theories here. Number one, since they know a lot of things in the human world, like snakes, lions, and even Santa Claus, they also know what gorillas are, and so pattern a position out of it. Number two, yeah, they probably have gorillas in this world, and they have monster features on them that don't make them look like the gorillas we have in the real world. This took me a few minutes to think about it, but you couldn't? One frightening face does not a scare him make. Isn't this entire course in scaring basically just an acting class? No. The point of this scene is to show that there are multiple ways of scaring. Mike studies and knows every one, while Sully believes that there is only one way of doing it, which later causes them to be expelled from the scaring program. Though a roar wouldn't make him scream, it would make him cry. Alerting his parents, exposing the monster world, destroying life as we know it. Has the monster world, which is full of modern day technology, always had this ability to jump into the human world for power? Or was there a monster version of prehistoric- Oh my god, who the hell cares? 30 years in the textile industry and then old Dandy Don got downsized. Figured I could throw myself a pity party or go back to school and learn the computers. This is too real. Painfully real. Is too real a sin for a cartoon monster movie? Aren't you the same person that constantly asks movies to be realistic? But when the movie actually does that, you sin it anyway? Shouldn't a monster universe have a human creature on their Lisa Frank style notebooks? A unicorn griffin thing probably lives out there somewhere. Oh, so you do think that animals in this world would have monster features? Then why did you question why a pig has spider legs? So basically, you guys have no scaring experience? <laughs> Not sure why Sully asks this question with a cadence of surprise. Based on the look of these guys, he should have known that they have no scaring experience. That's racist. Human children are toxic! And anything they touch is toxic!
We know this isn't true because of the other movie. But if everyone believes this, how are any of the monsters able to move around these kids' rooms without freaking out? They clearly touch things in the room that the kid has touched. They walk around them. We even see them having to do that in the scare simulator at the end of the games. I'm gonna beat you over that finish line. You're ready to eat my dust. Sully and Mike think that in a team race, it's best they race each other instead. That's the point. At this moment, Sully and Mike are rivals, and so ignore the fact that they have a team, which causes them to lose the race. This is a character flaw, and the movie itself is aware of that. This is not a legitimate sin. Hey, second place ain't bad! I find it totally ridiculous that Know-It-All Mike thinks that just because he and Sully crossed the finish line without the rest of the team, they finished the race. Refer to the previous sin. Oh, a ladybug! For those of you keeping score at home, they have silverback gorillas and normal ladybugs in their universe. Do you want me to replay that Family Guy clip? The faculty at this school can get away with literally anything. The noise he made was completely out of his control. Yet it got him physically ejected from the building by being thrown through the roof. I wish I could say that I'm surprised you also missed this giant after earlier claiming there was only one. You should have stuck to my strategy! Mike thinks his strategy was working, even though they were on the cusp of losing because of his strategy. I mean, maybe they could have done something better, but what you're forgetting is that in that scene, Sully was rushing, and as a result, made too much noise, which is what Mike is saying. Apparently you only get caught in this game if you're just so shitty at hiding it looks like you're not even trying. Because everyone knows what Sully looks like, and him lying on the ground like a bear rug should not be a good hiding place. But it did require a small amount of effort. But humans wouldn't know who Sully is, which is the point of the game. Tomorrow, each of you must prove that you are undeniably scary. And I know for a fact that one of you is not. Just one? I feel like excluding Sully, Mike is the scariest of all the Uzma Kappa members. There's no reason for her to single Mike out when all the rest of them are not scary. That's not what the movie is saying. In the scare simulator at the end, Don, Squishy, and Terry and Terry all get good scores proving that they are all scary. Art is proven to not be in that same scene and Mike's score was fake. So the real sin is that Hardscrabble is saying only one of them is scary, when really it should be two. If they did the hide and sneak challenge on this field, Mike would clearly have the advantage, because he and the grass are the exact same color. Pointing things out on the screen, eh? Why would you ever have settings like this? A scare is a scare, f***os. Who among these students pursuing a degree benefits from the easy setting? This is something that was established earlier in the movie. Today's final will judge your ability to assess a child's fear and perform the appropriate scare. In the scare simulator, the child's sensitivity level will be raised from bedwetter to heavy sleeper. So give it everything you've got. The relationship between the monster's world and the human's world is so volatile, why would a student's ID allow Mike to access the lab and operation of a door? Because the students who worked on this door are aware of the dangers of the human world? They forgot for a moment that they were being chased by toxic humans. Did you seriously not remove a sin for this scene? Maybe even the best scene in the movie? They're adults. I can't do this. Yes, Were they told that adults couldn't be scared by monsters? I know a lot of adults, and most of them would be pooped their pants scared if a sully-like monster came out of nowhere and roared at them. Maybe the monsters should study the energy capabilities of pants pooping. These people assume that Sully is a bear, and they're trying to create enough scream energy to open a door from the other side. That's why Mike's plan is to have stuff move around them, Sully scratch the walls, and then tie them up with a fishing pole. If the canisters can be filled without being attached to the door, is attaching them really necessary? Also, it seems like adult screams are more powerful than kid screams. Why did this moment not teach them that scaring adults is more effective? Even if this did teach them that, that would be a terrible idea. Adults are smarter than kids, so if they scared adults, then that would expose the monster world because the adults would spread the word and maybe even record what happened. I mean, sure, maybe humans wouldn't believe those things, but the monsters wouldn't want to risk that. Art Scrabble's letting us into the scare program. Art Scrabble showed no mercy to Mike and Sully, who were able to power a door from the other side, which is apparently something no one has done before. But she gives the rest of Uzma Kappa a chance to be in the scare program because they were kind of scary. Yeah, let's just leave out the fact that Mike and Sully broke into a lab and blew up a door. If you ignore that, then he'd have a point. You're the scariest bunch of monsters I have ever met. Don't let anyone tell you different. And since they didn't show up in Monsters, Inc., that's the last time Mike and Sully ever saw these friends. Just like real college. Who's to say they don't call them from time to time? I'll have you know tampering with the mail is a crime punishable by banishment! Lazily tossing in a reason for the abominable snowman's banishment. The real sin is that Sully and Mike meet him in this scene, but when they meet again in the Himalayas, they act like they've never met before. 
Heck, you somehow went this whole video without mentioning this continuity error. You've been jealous of my good looks since the fourth grade, pal. <laughs> How are you so bad at your job? The real sin is that Sally and Mike meet him in this scene, but when they meet each other again in the Himalayas, they act... Yeah. The real sin is that Sally and Mike meet him in this scene, but when they meet again... The real sin is that Sally and Mike meet him in this scene, but when they meet again in the Himalayas, they act like they never met... Oh my gosh. The real sin is that Sally and Mike meet him in this scene, but when they meet again in the Himalayas, they act like they've never... They've never... They've never met. The real sin is that Sally and Mike meet him in this scene, but when they meet again in the Himalayas, they act like they ne they act they act like oh my gosh. The real sin is that Sally and Mike meet him in this scene, but when they meet each other again in the Himalayas. The real sin here is that Sally and Mike meet him in this scene, but when they meet again in the Himalayas, they act like they never they've never met before. Why is that so hard to say?